Now I come to the female head, probably a head of Inanna, a fertility goddess that we'll deal with again through this chapter. And here what we see is this stone head with inlaid eyes and eyebrows. And these would have been inlaid with precious stones. Now, whenever I say precious stones, what that means is stones that are precious to that society. It could be amethyst or lapis or any number of other things. To us, diamonds are precious, but that's a very modern idea. So every society has its own precious sort of stones, and they focus on the eyes because the eyes are seen as the windows to the soul. It's how we perceive much of the world. The eyes probably would have been rock crystal, so a white rock crystal, with other stones inset in the center to make it look more lifelike. In this case, the hair would have been gold. Now, why gold? Why do we find gold so precious? Well, it's easy to work, but it's also the only metal that doesn't oxidize. So even early people knew that it was rare and it was unusual because of this perceived purity. It also happens to be the color of the sun, which is usually the center of worship for many of these societies. And this would have been attached to a wooden life-sized armature or statue. Now, what would have happened is imagine this head on sort of a wooden armature on a very basic sort of stick figure form. It wouldn't look right, but of course you're going to dress it. And when you put clothing on that armature, it's now hidden. So you would see this head and the rest of the body would be clothed in sort of long clothing. It's probably the goddess Inanna. The reason we believe this to be a goddess is the use of the gold hair and the precious stones. You don't put those kind of resources into a depiction of a simple priest or priestess, much less a simple person. You would only do that in the case of a god. The object was also found in a temple complex which tends to indicate that this is the fertility goddess Inanna. And oftentimes we're making those kinds of jumps in art history, looking at the information we have and using it to figure out who or what we're dealing with. Now, also dealing with Inanna, we have the Warka vase. And what we're seeing here is a religious festival speaking to fertility once again. Instead of human fertility, this is fertility of crops. Fertility is always a, a major issue because we see how often even today we have droughts or other you know floods or any number of things that can destroy the crops. They have those same concerns. And when you look at it, you'll notice it's made up of different levels, uh, five of them to be exact. And each one of those is known as a register. So we have one here, up above, and then here's the bottom of the next one, here's another, here's another, and finally there's a little band of water at the very bottom here. And those registers are just levels of information. So whenever you see a vase with these different levels, it's referred to as registers. And in this case, each one means something. So at the very bottom, that wavy line, that is water right down here. Above it, we have uh, crops. And this is not corn. It looks kind of like corn. Corn does not exist in the old world. Above that, we have sheep, uh, both male and female. Now, sheep are a primary source of protein to the Sumerians. Next we have a procession of nude men with uh, jars carrying the bountiful goods. Basically what we're seeing is a very bountiful harvest and if you have a particularly good harvest you're going to give part of that to the fertility goddess which we see at the top and it's a little clear 
here because we have to deal with our friend over here in a second. And here we see the goddess is the largest figure. You can see her that way here as well. Uh, she's clearly the largest figure. This is hierarchy of scale. So this is Inanna. And she's also wearing a very tall, strange-looking headdress. And then we have the two poles behind her. The two poles behind her are her name as a pictograph. Uh, sort of in this pictorial language that we see apart from cuneiform. In front of her is a priest giving her an offering. And then behind him is this gentleman over here. He's again larger than everyone else. But he's probably not the a god. Instead, he's more than likely a priest king. Uh, this religious secular leader. And he's having the priest, who's beneath him socially, provide this offering to Inanna and making it clear that he's the one providing it to her. Also making clear to his people that he, in some way, provided for those crops to be bountiful because he was a good and dutiful priest.